Hey guys, Sneaky Snake here, Brothers in Arms, World of Warships, and today's video is a replay by Putin597. He's playing in his tier 10 Japanese super battleship, the Yamato, and he's playing some domination here on the map Trap. So whenever we feature the Yamato on our channel, it, tend, it tends to do really well view-wise. You guys like these replays. It's clear that the World of Warships community really enjoys high tier gameplay, and Putin is the only one so far of myself Spider and him that has this glorious battleship. So whenever he features a replay on the channel, it's generally a good one, and this one will certainly not disappoint. Now the thing about the Yamato is that it's probably the best battleship in the game, tier for tier, hands down. It has the best combination of armor and firepower of any battleship, regardless of tier, regardless of nation. And this thing, ever since the game came out, has just been able to absolutely push entire servers around whenever it comes into a favorable situation. Now, I'm sure a lot of you that watch our channel and have seen plenty of our Yamato replays beforehand know that Putin is very, very aggressive when it comes to his battleship. And although it's a very risky playstyle and sometimes leads to very early demise to the begrettlement of his teammates, whenever it works out, let me tell you, he knows how to Yamato, and this replay right here is a perfect example of that. So the map trap. Um, looking at it from the top-down view as Putin switches back to his ship, uh, this map has been changed several times. Most notably, it deals with the spawn points. Uh, way back when the game first came out, most of the spawns were closer to Alpha, so A and B were the points where the battles took place and C was generally neglected. And some time ago, they changed it again to where the spawn points were more towards Charlie. So then Charlie and Bravo were the main contention points, and Alpha would be neglected again. And now I think they finally hit a nice balance where they have a good portion of the team spawn more towards C, and a good portion of the team spawns towards Alpha. And uh, even still, sometimes either C or A is neglected, but most of the games that happen, the objective Charlie is the way to go. And this is where Puddin is taking his Yamato. Now he has a Zao, he has a Friedrich de Grosso, there's also another battleship behind him a couple kilometers off his stern that is heading over here towards Charlie. So there's plenty of firepower that will be able to take care of whatever comes. However, Puddin will be in for a slightly nasty surprise once he gets in towards the cap. Now the Yamato, what to say about it? I mean, it has over 26 kilometer range, it has 18.1 inch guns, the biggest guns on any battleship in the game. As he's lining up his first salvo here on the Amagi, which he shoots. It has absolutely amazing armor, over 400 millimeters along the belt. The bow on this thing is really good. I believe it is over 30 millimeters of bow armor, which basically allows you to bounce when you're angled in well. Every shell in the game, except for those pesky 18.1 inch shells from other Yamatos. So this thing, when bowing, is just absolutely a terror to deal with. And right here, as he's looking for his next shot on the Amagi with three seconds left on the reload. There's more enemy ships on the way. A Zao appears right as he fires his second salvo. There's a Baltimore coming. There is an enemy in Montana. And Putin is about to say, screw this, I'm going in. And that's why I enjoy whenever he gets going in his battleship, specifically the Yamato. This thing is absolutely terrifying to deal with. He's looking for his third shot now on the Amagi. Sees the enemy Baltimore is presenting a nice broadside. Only two shells have hit just under 5,000 damage. Two seconds left on his third saddle, looking for the shot. Shots are on the way, and let's see here. The dispersion doesn't look too bad. One thing about the Amato is if you do not run the accuracy module, it's somewhat shoddy for accuracy, but then you gotta realize that that number for dispersion, although it's rather high, that's that dispersion, about 240, 250 meters at 26 kilometers. So the closer that you get in this thing, almost guaranteeing to be able to absolutely obliterate any enemy ship. Cruisers cannot angle from you. Battleships cannot angle from you. This thing is just absolutely brutal. He gets his next salvo out on the Baltimore. Aims a little bit too far ahead, and yet he still manages to do about 8,000 damage with only two shells hitting. If he would have aimed just slightly more towards the bridge and the after part of the Baltimore, I think he would have been able to nuke him out right there. Enemy Montana happens to run aground on the island, and yes, even at tier 10, there are plenty of potatoes to shoot at, and he's providing a very solid broadside for putting to shoot at as he gets ready and fires his next salvo out at that Montana. So at this point, there's five enemy ships that are right out in front of Puddin, and yeah, he does not care. 6,300 damage done on the Montana. Very surprisingly, does not get a very heavy hit on the Montana. He didn't have uh, very much damage taken, and he hadn't really had much part of his hull saturated with armor-piercing shot. So I'm very surprised he didn't land a greater salvo. He's up to 20,000 points of damage here, about four minutes into the game. And now he's looking for a shot on the enemy Amagi. He's got 15,000 points of health, shoots out his front guns, enemy or friendly shells from behind hit him and then Putin takes him out with one penetrating shot and then the citadel his first ship destroyed 
Japanese Tier 8 battleship, Battle Cruiser, and he is now on Objective Charlie, sitting bow in with four enemy ships right in front of him, and he is just taking the damage like a boss. He's lost about a third of his hit points. The fire goes out. The Zhao shoots at him yet again. He's looking for a nice salvo here. Not sure if he's moving forward or backwards. It shoots near towards the rear of the Zhao. Shells are falling in on the target. He's at 14 kilometers away. You can see the dispersion is decent at best. And without a single Citadel, 13,000 points of damage with four penetrating shell hits. Once again, Puddin, very unlucky that he did not score a Citadel or two against that Japanese Tier 10 heavy cruiser. The Zao does have some pretty troll armor, but at an angle like that, those 18-inch shells will go through like butter. He continues to tank more damage from the enemy battleships, specifically the Montana and the Amagi on the enemy team. Looking for another shot on the Zao. That is certainly the most dangerous ship that uh, is in front of him at the moment. You can see the dispersion yet again. Very, very shoddy. It doesn't appear that any of the shells are going to hit. He does manage to get one overpin, though, for 1,480. 42,000 points of damage, 16 shells hit, one Citadel, and the Amagi taken care of. The score right now is 394 to 376. He is able to capture Objective Charlie with the assist. His team does have Objective Bravo, and the majority of the enemy team did push down to Objective Alpha. There's only one friendly destroyer down there, so uh, once he does eventually get destroyed, they are going to have to deal with the enemy ships that will be certainly racing back to Objective Bravo. Shoots a shot at the Zao and actually hits the Baltimore too. 4,500 on the Zao, but he had one shell also dive into the Baltimore stern. So hitting two birds with one stone there. That's pretty awesome indeed. The enemy Montana continues to back up away from Puddin. He is at 41,000 hit points, Puddin that is, but uh, it doesn't really matter at this point because Puddin is just taking this like a boss. And this is stuff that you don't see a lot of out of Yamato players. It's very rare for them to not only hit the W key and go forward, but actually keep the forward momentum of the ship going. And when the situation dictates for it to just absolutely push in and take care of business. So now, as I say that, Putin is getting moving forward as he continues to look for more shots here on this Montana who continues to go in reverse, it appears. And now, it looks like he actually might be going forward. Uh, now he's still going in reverse. Putin shot fallen in on the target 14 kilometers away. He uses his damage control to get some of his health back. 2,400 damage. An unlucky bounce off the Montana. A very rare occurrence there with these glorious guns. They are absolute low pen machines. And he sees that there's an enemy turpets that's now in the objective. Bravo. He goes undetected. The detection range on the Yamato can actually get down to around 13 and a half kilometers if you go with the concealment build. And as he fires his guns, he's certainly going to get spotted yet again. The Zao has went behind the island at 16 and a half kilometers away, putting shots flying in on the Montana. Will he get the kill? Actually, no. Three bounces. Wow, that is a very, very large surprise. Five of his last six shells that have hit the Montana have bounced. It was very unlucky for Puddin, and it doesn't appear that he's going to be able to get his next shadows out before he dies. Indeed, the friendly Zal takes care of business, and now Puddin is going to turn in towards Objective Bravo. So, so far, you're probably wondering, well, I mean, this hasn't been a bad result, but I'm not sure what you're uh, talking about being such a good game snake. Well, don't worry. Once Puddin pushes into Objective Bravo, it's all going to be readily apparent. Looking for his front turrets now on the enemy turrets. He does get hit by a couple of Fletcher torpedoes. Takes about 20,000 points of damage. He certainly is going to be flooding after that, so he uses uh, Repair Party. But now Puddin is going to try and get in range for his secondaries. Now, the secondaries on the Yamato, something I forgot to mention, are absolutely deadly. They have a range of well over 10 kilometers with a full secondary build and there's just so many of them on the ship that any enemy ship specifically destroyers that get within that range of you just absolutely get obliterated looking for his next two front guns salvo here on the enemy turrets he's got 29,000 points of hit points left shells fallen in on and 5,300 damage two penetrating salvos or shells i should say one over pen he's up to 58,000 points of damage 26 shell hits one Citadel, one assisted base capture, and still only one ship to his credit. Now the enemy Montana, yet another one that is almost at full health, is coming in from Objective Alpha. There's also yet another enemy battleship to his left. So he's got three battleships, one directly off the bow, one just slightly to port, and one just slightly to starboard. And there's also an enemy North Carolina that's moving in as well. His shells are flying in on the enemy Montana. Let's see what kind of RNG he gets out of this, and just a tad short. A little unlucky there. Enemy Iowa also appears off to his right as well. So he's got two battleships now that are slowly going to his port side. And 
two on a starboard, and then another ship, an enemy Des Moines, the tier 10 American heavy cruiser appears directly off his uh, bow. So he's got five enemy ships that he's got to deal with, and this is certainly going to get intense here really quickly. The scores are 626 to 371. His team has a comfortable lead. They've destroyed four ships to only losing two of their own. Putting Salvo fallen in on the Montana. Yet another solid Salvo. 14,000 points of damage. No Citadel. A slightly bit unlucky, but nonetheless, 14,000 damage will be enough to get that Montana to pay attention. So now, as he continues to move in towards Objective Bravo, just as he crosses the threshold for the cap, he's looking for shots here now on the enemy North Carolina or the Iowa over there on his starboard side. And he decides to go for the enemy North Carolina. Shots out. He does happen, however, to go inside the Fletcher smoke that he dropped. Now, I'm not sure if the Fletcher dropped it for him specifically, but either way, Poon is going to take advantage of it and one overpin for only 1,480 damage on the enemy North Carolina. Iowa is taking shots from his friend in the Zao behind him. There's also a couple other ships of his that are moving in towards Objective Bravo. He's up to 74,000 points of damage, 30 shell hits, one plane shot down, one Citadel, one assisted base capture. And still the only ship destroyed, so his name is the Amagi. Shots out on the enemy Iowa. Let's see what we get here out of this. And there we go. There's a Citadel, 14,800 points of damage. The only shell of that salvo that did any damage, but still a Citadel, it's all good stuff. So now, as he continues to push into B, he decides to back up because he's getting a little too uh, uncomfortable with the fact that those ships are now going to be well uh, within range of being able to do some significant damage because even at the angle that he is providing, armor piercing into his superstructure will still do a lot indeed. Shell's fallen in on the Iowa. Will he get the kill? Yes, he does. Second kill of the game, 1,800 points of damage, kill secure. An enemy Iowa taken down to J Davy Jones's locker. Excuse me, 91,000 points of damage. Very solid stuff. The scores are 616 to 446, and he continues to back up. And now he's looking for shots here on the enemy North Carolina. He's getting his rear turret into play, something he doesn't do very often, but if you do, you can really get that firepower going if the shells cooperate and RNG throws you a bone. Shells falling in on the North Carolina. Let's see here. There we go. A Citadel, 3,700 extra damage, so he does over 18,000 points of damage. Very solid stuff. His secondaries are now opening him up, opening up, excuse me, on the enemy Shimakaze, who has gotten in range in Objective Bravo. He cracked 100. He's now at 110,000 points of damage, and he's looking for the kill shot here on the enemy North Carolina. Will he be able to get it? Waits for his front two guns to get reloaded. Fires a full broadside out at the enemy North Carolina. He is at a very good angle, but this Japanese armor piercing just does not care. 4,800 points of damage. Third battleship taken out in the game for him in Amagi, North Carolina, and in Iowa. He's up to 114,000 points of damage. An enemy Amagi and the Des Moines and the Shimmy are all cowering in fear behind Objective Bravo. They, for whatever reason, have not pushed out. Now, that enemy Montana that's off to his port side has completely neglected him. And what I said earlier about he got a little uncomfortable about being too far pushed into Bravo is that if those enemy battleships off to his port side continued to move off in the distance, they would get to a, a, a point where they'd be able to get some solid broadside shots. But for whatever reason, that Montana has completely paid zero attention to him. And luckily for Puddin, he has not taken any damage from that guy whatsoever. Swinging his front guns into play against the enemy of Montana. He is not spotted, so he's looking for a shot here from the, the, uh, the darkness. He gets it out. Full, uh, excuse me, not a full broadside. Just the two front guns out. The Montana, unfortunately, is going a bit slow for Putin, and he misjudged the shot. And a few shells fall harmlessly off of his bow. So now as Putin is moving up here into Bravo even deeper, he's got those two enemy ships that are only a few kilometers in front of him. And where has that Shimakaze gun? I don't know. He launched his torpedoes a couple minutes ago, so he's definitely got to be reloaded by now. And as Putin swings his guns into play to try to get a full broadside on this Amagi, and will he get the full point blank nuke? Let's see here. Full broadside out, and no. No Citadel. 16,000 points of damage. Very unlucky. And as Putin cre creeps out in front of the island, oh no, the enemy Shimakaze at full health is right there, and he's definitely got his torpedoes reloaded by now. So Putin pulls on the E-brake. He's trying to get his ship stopped. He's looking for his rear turret now on either the Shimakaze or the... Uh, Des Moines, I don't really know. He manages to hit the Shimakaze with one of his shells, and just as he starts to go in reverse, the enemy torpedoes from that Shimakaze are coming in. His front guns get reloaded. A little bit of lag right there. Shots out, and kaboom, he gets four overpens on the Des Moines. Very unlucky. Takes four torpedoes from the Shimmy, but because he's in a Yammy and he has absolutely glorious torpedo belt armor, he's not really in too bad a shape. He does lose quite a bit of hit points. His AA guns are going off. This is absolutely getting crazy. Nine planes shot down. He's hooked to 150,000 points of damage. Torpedo bombers fly over. His secondaries are continuing to rack up the hits on the enemy destroyer. Gets his front guns ready to go on the Des Moines. He's got 5,000 hit points left. Will he be able to snag the kill? 
Yes, it does. There we go. Fourth ship destroyed 157,000 points of damage, and the Shimakaze gets taken out by the Fletcher. More dive bombers come in. They do manage to set Pund on fire. His AA continues to shoot down more planes. Now he's looking for his rear turret here on the Montana, and somehow that guy has paid literally zero attention to him. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know what that guy was doing. I mean, there's times where people potato really hard, but I don't think that guy is just having a moment of potato-ness. I think he is a straight-up potato. I mean, Putin was literally sitting there completely broadside. Obviously, there was plenty more ships that he had to worry about, but that Montana is just an idiot. <laughs> There's really no other way to explain that. 157,000 points of damage here. Three Citadels, four ships destroyed, Confederate taken, 56 shell hits, 12 planes shot down, one assisted base cap, of quite a few secondary hits, 17 to be exact. The Des Moines does take out his friendly Friedrich de Grossa behind him with his high explosive in the fire. And now he's looking for an absolute nuke here on the enemy Montana. Gets a full broadside out. The dispersion looks okay. Shell's fallen in on the Montana, and he's just a little bit short. 6,300 damage. Missed out on the opportunity to absolutely obliterate that Tier 10 American battleship. But nonetheless, now he's got to start turning in because he only has 2,770 hit points. And even if that Montana gets quite a few overpins on a superstructure, that will be enough to take him out. So as the secondary start to go off, Pun continues to turn completely bow in towards this enemy Montana, looking for his front two turrets on it. The Montana is going to start to turn a little bit more to the broadside. Shells are flying in on the target. Will he get rewarded for it? Eh, 5,400 damage. I don't know. Wasn't the best of salvos, but it certainly wasn't terrible. Shells flying in from the Montana, and he took no damage. <laughs> A full broadside of 16-inch shells, and you can see why this Yamato is just so beast. Just tanking the entire broadside from a Montana. That thing actually has a higher broadside weight. It has more weight on its shells than the Yamato does, and they all bounce harmlessly off the bow and the deck. Absolutely ridiculous. Some people think that the Montana is just way too weak in the game, and when you see stuff like that, I can understand why people think that way. Now, there's, unfortunately for putting a, just a ridiculous amount of dive bombers and torpedo planes coming in on him and if there's one thing about the Amato that certainly pales in comparison to the Montana it's the AA he has shut down quite a few planes but unfortunately he gets the dreaded double fire and enemy torpedo bombers drop their load on him he is going to be able to get out of the way a little bit of lag and then unfortunately the second group of dive bombers take him out the Essex gets the kill wow what a fantastic push by Puddin here in his Yamato Taking a look now at the post-battle results, 1,656,000 credits received. He completed a couple of the Guadalcanal challenges for some credits, 11,000 points of experience earned. Confederate secured 187,000 points of damage, 67 target hits, 15 planes shot down, 4 ships destroyed, 3 citadels, 1 assisted base cap, and 23 target hits with his secondaries. Taking a look at the team score, easily tops on the team, 2,886 base XP. That is an absolutely killer game in the Tier 10 Japanese battleship, the Yamato. So, once again, another Yamato replay on the channel. We know you guys love them and will continue to dish them out every now and then. Hope you guys enjoyed the replay. Please comment and like on the video. Give us a subscription if you're not sure. And with that being said, the Sneaky Snake here for Brothers in Arms World of Warships. Have a great day, guys.